New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's apology following his resignation on Tuesday is being met with criticism. One of Cuomo's former aides and accusers, Charlotte Bennett, called his statement, quote, meaningless. Cuomo defended his actions, which were detailed in a state attorney general's report characterizing them as a misunderstanding, uh, the governor did. He also made it a point to remind New Yorkers of what he sees as his accomplishments during his tenure. For more, I want to bring in Tarana Burke. She is the founder and executive director of Me Too International. Tarana, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. So in his announcement on Tuesday, uh, Andrew Cuomo essentially uh, cast this as, uh, we said, as a misunderstanding. He said that he never did or would intentionally disrespect a woman. What's your re reaction to the governor's resignation and how he's addressed these allegations against him? Well, I think the, the resignation was warranted, and I'm glad that that decision was finally made, although I was surprised that he actually did so without being forced out. Um, but as for his apology or so-called apology, it definitely was lackluster um, and, and, quite frankly, disappointing. And I think it points to it's further evidence that he is not equipped to be a leader. Um, using excuses, blaming the victim, it's such typical behavior that we see from people who cause harm and commit acts of sexual violence. We see it over and over again. But to see it from somebody in a position like Governor Cuomo's is just even more disappointing and, quite frankly, dangerous. So I want to play some sound from New York Attorney General Letitia James detailing the findings of her report on the governor. Let's listen to some of that. Governor Cuomo sexually harassed current and former state employees in violation of both federal and state laws. The independence investigation found that Governor Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women, many of whom were young women, by engaging in unwanted groping, kisses, hugging, and by making inappropriate comments. So Governor Cuomo's attorney, Rita Glavin, tried to refute James's report. She said, quote, I think that women should be believed and they should be treated fairly. I also believe that men should be believed and treated fairly. Toronto, what do you hear in that statement? From his attorney? Uh, I hear spin is what I hear, because the thing about this case that makes it so much different than other high-profile cases that we've seen over the last four years is that these women came forward, or the first accusation was months ago, and then there was an investigation. There was not an immediate call across the board for his resignation. There was a thorough investigation by people outside of the administration who took their time to gather evidence, to do interviews, to, to really do a rigorous investigation before this report was put out. So I don't know how much more fair you can be if, outside of investigating claims when they come in and coming up with evidence to support those claims. So I, I think that, yes, I do believe that it should be fair on both sides, and this is a perfect example of that to me. So one of the leaders of Time's Up, Roberta Kaplan, stepped down Tuesday from the organization, as you know, for her close ties to Cuomo. Um, some staffers who were women were also tasked, allegedly, with trying to discredit some of his accusers. I, I wonder, as someone who has worked in this space and on this issue, what is your takeaway from what we have learned about that situation? Well, I think, one, we have to look at that, situa that situation because it's indicative of, you know, the, the kind of perils of doing this work. Um, I think that some choices were made, for sure. And I also think that it is people need to understand that patriarchy and misogyny is not isolated to men, right? There are lots of women who hold up patriarchy and who participate in misogyny. And I think, you know, what we've seen from the chief of staff um, from the governor's office is uh, an example of that. Now, Time's Up as an organization shouldn't be indicted for the choices of one person. And I think that person made poor choices and poor decisions, which is why she stepped down. So I guess the question now is, you know, what happens next for, you know, your organization, for Time's Up, given 
what we have seen here and the complexity and the layers of what we are, you know, seeing develop here, um, is there a different approach? Do you see this as a moment where um, a new generation of young female leaders may emerge based on these developments that we've seen now? Well, first, I hope that there are, there's already a new generation of young female leaders emerging, and I hope that this, you know, inspires even more. But I do think that really large organizations, as particularly women's organizations, that have proximity to power, that have relationships that they can leverage for change, are more, you know, I think we have to be more careful and scrutinize more closely those relationships, and even that as a, as a, um, as a tactic, because sometimes we may have to forgo the win, if you will, um, in order to maintain the integrity of the movement. I think that Time's Up has done amazing work over the last three or four years. Our organization, Me Too International, works very particularly with survivors. So our work is outside of politics and outside of, you know, sort of what the mainstream sees. But Time's Up takes up a space that was not formally occupied, right? They do really high profile um, cases and they are, they have really high, pro high profile people involved. And that's always going to run the risk. But there were very few people willing to take that risk before they organized. And so I think people need to keep that in mind as well. And one last question for you, Tarana. Has this at all changed your own approach or changed conversations that you're having, you know, with members of your organization here moving forward? We do different work. <laughs> My organization is survivor-centered, and we are working on healing and action. And so I think that, you know, I think that people who do this work across the board in the movement to end sexual violence, all of us are sort of on our toes and on our P's and Q's about it. We all have to be really careful about the way we move. Because the truth of the matter is, I can meet somebody tomorrow who says, I want to donate a million dollars to your organization, or, you know, I want to help in some sort of way. You just don't know until you know sometimes that people have ulterior motives or they're shady. So we all have to kind of be on our, P, on our P's and Q's, if you will. But my conversation is mm -hmm. always the same. As long as we operate with integrity and transparency and we stay focused on our, on our goal, which is supporting survivors, making sure they have the resources to heal, and taking action to end sexual violence, then we'll be okay. And so will Time's Up. Toronto Burke, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Thank you.